All right, everyone. Um, my name is Zia, and I'm the dental school coach. Today, we are going to talk about how to write an ad-set personal statement, even if you are a terrible writer. Um, so we are trying to, uh, we'll try to write down the personal statement uh, by the by the end of the webinar. Um, we'll have at least have an outline ready for you, if if not the whole uh, personal statement, so that you can start writing on uh, on, on the personal statement. Just to give you a bit, a bit of background about myself, um, I am uh, a UPenn graduate from 2013. I was a biochemistry and international relations major. I uh, got accepted to UPenn, UCSF, NYU, Rutgers, and Pittsburgh dental schools, um, so five of them. And I started dental school coach in 2014. Uh, I coached about 250 students, more or less. Um, and my success rate is about 97%. So my students got accepted to schools like Harvard, Penn, Columbia, UCSF, and many more schools. Um, and while this webinar is not about me, so I'm gonna keep it short, but uh, just, just to give you a sense of you know, where I'm coming from, uh, some of my students uh, wrote me some great uh, recommendations, so just take a look at it. Um, these are available on my website, so if you can go to the go to the website, you will also see these uh, testimonials. Uh, here are some more testimonials. Now, let's uh, let's begin. Let me talk about the agenda that I have for today. Uh, this webinar should take somewhere between 70 to 75 minutes. I hope to end earlier if I can, uh, but if it takes uh, longer, uh, that you know. I hope uh, you know. I hope that this video would be available for about uh, a few few more days. So maybe two two three more days, so you can go and watch it uh, if you can't make the whole video. Um, so today we're going to talk about why you should write a freaking amazing personal statement. Then I'll talk about what you should have in your personal statement, the anatomy. Um, so I came up with a framework after working with 250 students because I've seen that a lot of the times uh, students. Uh, you know, successful students have the same structure in their essay. Uh, they write, uh, they they have, you know, they have the same structure of uh, writing in their essay that made them successful in the dental school application process. And I call this framework GPSL, and I'll go into in depth uh, with that framework today. While talking about the framework and the anatomy of the personal statement uh, for dental school, I'll also talk about subtle psychological hooks that you should use in your personal in your personal statement that's going to make it irresistible. And finally, I'll talk about some of the mistakes you should avoid. Um, and you know, those mistakes are going to cost you a lot. So you know, avoid those mistakes. We're going to talk about them throughout the throughout the webinar. And um, and absolutely at the fine, you know, at the at the very end, I'm going to go ahead and um, open up my personal statement review page and give you a special offer for joining the webinar today. So. <clears throat> Let me see who else is um, is joining. So I, I'm seeing that five people are watching. Please let me know where you're watching from. Um, I would I would love to know. And also, <coughs> the next part of the um, you know for for joining the webinar, please go to this link. I'm uh, sharing this link on the YouTube chat, and it would be really useful because I have three personal statement on uh, this website uh, link. And if you go into that link, you'll find those three personal statement. Um, I, I'm going to use them for uh, the demonstration today. So feel free, you know, feel free to go in and, and take a look at the website, uh, take a look at the personal statements that I'm sharing on the website. So <coughs> let me go back to the link again. Um, before before I start uh, this, you know, before I start jumping on and going to the details of uh, the webinar, let me, you know, let me do, go. Uh, let me take a step back and give you some housekeeping housekeeping rules. I'll probably uh, stop every 10-15 minutes to go back on the YouTube channel and check out the comments that you have uh, and and just um, j just make sure that I answer all your questions so that you know uh, you you have you have some you have gained something valuable by the end of the webinar. Um, with that said, you know, let's talk about the psychology of a great personal statement. Why should we write a great personal statement? The reason you should write a great personal statement is because 
adcoms are human beings, the dental adcoms are human beings and they want to get to know you. And that's the ultimate truth. They want to know you as a human being. And as he, as all the, you know, as everyone um, in the in the world, people like to be entertained. People like to learn the stories of other people, and people like to listen to stories. So Adco wants to listen to your story, and that's why you have to write a great personal statement to uh, get their attention. And because they're making the decision about dental school admission, you should really care about that. Sometimes uh, you know, a great personal statement can compensate for a low GPA or a DAT score. This is a hit or miss. I have had few students who got a 3.0 GPA and maybe like 19 or 20 DAT, um, but their personal statement was really good and they got into some good programs. Uh, you know, I had a student who got into Arizona School of Dentistry and some other student who got into Midwestern Illinois. So you're not gonna get into a top tier schools with a low GPA, low DAT, but at least you're gonna get into a dental school. So if your goal is to get in, you know, a personal statement can definitely compensate for the low GPA. A personal statement, you know, a great personal statement can showcase your soft skills and strength and experiences. Um, the, the reason I put it in there is because in the application process, your DAT or GPA, they're important, you know, they're important part of your application. But you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna attract the outcomes just by those things. You have to show your, um, you know, you have to show your other sides, your, your strengths, your weaknesses, your experiences, those come in the personal statement and that's why you should write a great one. And finally, personal statement is a place for you to sell yourself uh, to the ad comps. And it's, a, you know, it's basically a selling tool that will help you get into a good dental school. With that said, let's jump on to talk about the anatomy of a personal statement. This is, a, this is a screenshot I got from the American Dental Education Association website. It basically you know, describes what they expect from you uh, in terms of writing a personal statement. You know, some, some things that are pretty, pretty useful, such as um, your personal statement should be under 4,500 character, um, and you know, write stories, be colorful, positive, imaginative, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it, it, it says some good stuff, but it doesn't really give you a you know, good direction to follow in terms of writing a personal statement. So I want you to be very careful in you know, just using this as your baseline. Um, you want to tell your story, but you also want to be strategic about it, right? So let's jump right in to talk about GPSL framework. So what is the GPSL framework? <clears throat> the G stands for Genesis, or the origination of your interest in dentistry. Um, so how did you become interested in dentistry? And you know, you have to write a story about that. The P stands for personality. So you have to shine your personality whenever you are, you know, writing your story in the dental essay. Uh, and some people write only a paragraph about their personality and some people inject their personality into the whole essay. So, you know, you have to make a decision about what uh, you want to use, uh, you know, what framework you want to use in terms of talking about your personality. And we'll, we'll delve into that much deeper later on. The next one is shadow story. The S stands for shadow story. Every single um, pre-dental that I have coached had shadowed a dentist. And if you, don't sh if you haven't shadowed a dentist, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't write a personal statement or you couldn't apply to dental school. So what's that shadow story? Uh, what did you learn from, you know, from that shadowing and how did you implement that learning into something else that you have been working on? Uh, for example, your community service or volunteering. And finally, uh, what's your leadership story? Uh, the L stands for leadership and what's your leadership story? Leadership could be, you know, from a sorority, uh, you know, being a president of a sorority or a fraternity, or it could be, you know, leading a team uh, of community service volunteers. Um, we are going to talk more about what is acceptable and what is not acceptable uh, in terms of uh, the leadership stories. And finally, we, are, um, we have to connect all of this, the GPSL, the genesis, the personality, the shadowing story, the leadership story, into a single theme, uh, the single thread that's going to connect all of, this, uh, all of these stories together. So with that said, uh, do you have any question? If you have any question, you know, type it in the chat box. I'll go back uh, to the chat and and respond to them uh, in the middle of the webinar. So let's 
talk about the GPSL framework uh, and let's start with the G. As we said, G stands for Genesis. So how did you become interested in dentistry? What is your story? You know, what is your story? What incidents, circumstance or event led you to consider dentistry in the first place? Now, you could have a discussion with your career advisor or your dad or some old wise man uh, about dentistry and you want to use that as your story uh, but I would recommend not to do that because you know it's just a it's just a boring incident a, a lot of you know a lot of my students uh, want to be dentists because you know they're maybe their parents want them to be a dentist or maybe because they want to have a good life or they want to have a you know they want to have a stable career and and that's acceptable you know people understand that but you have to be colorful in terms of uh, coming up with a story that um, you know that attracts the ad comes interest so you can talk about your visit to a dentist um, and how it transformed your life or you can talk about watching your dad or mom who was you know who were dentists and how how did that impact you as a you know as a as a teenager or as a kid growing up uh, maybe you have been a musician or a dancer or a painter or you have this, you know, aesthetic sense and that that aesthetic sense wanted you to be, you know, the, the fact that you have been a, an artist uh, made you more interested in dentistry because dentistry gives you the blend of science and artistry um, and, you know, and artistry. So let's look at an example of how my students have used um, used their story to talk about uh, their interest in dentistry. So this is a great example. Take 30 seconds to read this. Um, you know, this, this person got accepted to many schools, including UPenn, UCSF, um, UMichigan, and then NYU and Nova, University of Florida, so many schools. Um, so take a look at this specific um, story and let me know on the chat box what did you like about it. All right, so um, I'm gonna highlight some part of this um, of this personal statement that um, sorry. So, what did you like about this personal statement introduction? For me, it was the story that she tells. She tells the story of going to an emergency center and how the dental student was so empathetic to her situation and gave her an anesthetic and took her pain away. And she was mesmerized by, by this uh, incident. And, and, and this was what propelled her to become a dentist or think, you know, think about dentistry as her future vocation. So this is, this is kind of interesting for me because you know, many people have had similar experiences, um, but putting it into such nicely phrased you know story is quite difficult so i i you know i think this is one of the best interaction i've ever seen and um and then you know the person is is um is right now at, at university of penn dental school so it's it's great story and and you can see that the great story would bring great results the second um, example is actually from my personal statement. So take maybe like 15, 20 seconds to take a look at it, look at this one. What do you think about this story? This is unique because I started with a, you know, with a completely uh, foreign, with a foreign language, basically. I started with a, uh, with a Sanskrit language and it immediately hooks you uh, into reading this because it makes you curious into thinking, you know, what is this guy writing? What is this, what is he talking about? Um, I talked about my grandmother's toothache um, and also talked about how she did not get uh, care because of our family's limited finances. So um, you wanna, you know, you wanna make sure that the story that you tell or the story that you are thinking of telling uh, creates that curiosity in the adcom. Uh, if you do not have the, you know, if it cannot create the curios curiosity, it uh, makes it really hard for the outcome to read forward. Your introduction should always make them make it easy for them to read the second and third and the fourth paragraph. Um, with that said, let's uh, you know let me discuss what you shouldn't do in your um, in your statement in your introduction. I absolutely recommend that you start with a story. Um, some people do not start with a story, and that's a big mistake. And also, writing something generic or uninter um, uninteresting is going to kill your application. So please, please do not 
do that. You know, make sure you have a story to talk, talk about. And take a look at this example. This is a terrible example. It's from one of my students' um, first or second draft. And she basically, you know, she basically just uh, lists out in like a laundry list of what she has done. And I don't think that's pretty, you know, it's not appropriate to write out in the first paragraph. So I had her change the, you know, I had her change it from, from this to a story that worked better for her. Uh, take a look at it and see what you shouldn't, you know, don't follow this example because it's, it's, it's not a good one. And if you do that, you're losing, you're going to lose the interest of the ad com right on the get go. All right. Now we are going to do an exercise in the next, um, in the next slide, because I feel that if you do an exercise, it's going to keep you sharp and it's going to give you some pointers to, um, it's going to give you some pointers to write your write your personal statement down the line. If you are not writing it, you know, maybe within the next 7 to 8 days, you maybe you're maybe writing it in a month or so, you'll have something uh, to start from. So what I want you to uh, think about is write down 3 to 4 incidences or stories. You don't have to write down the details, just just, you know, write, write out bullets uh, that made you want to be a dentist. Maybe it was your visit to an orthodontics. Uh, maybe it was your visit to an emergency center where you had a, a tooth related issue. Maybe it was um, a shadowing trip that you did uh, with, with your dentist. You know, tell us about that incidence. So take maybe one minute to jot down your, um, you know, your three to four incidences. And then we would take it further and write more details on it. And when you're doing this exercise, keep in mind that why you want, you know, why people want to be a dentist, right? So some people want to be dentists because they want to combine their passion for arts and sciences. Um, some people want to be dentists because they're very good at their hand-eye coordination. And some people want to be dentists because they want to spread world healthcare. So, you know, if you have, if you're, if you fell into this, excuse me, if you fall into one of these categories, you know, just make sure to note that because it's going to be important later down the line. All right, I'm gonna go back to YouTube to see if uh, anyone has posted anything, uh, if anyone is, uh, um, you know, has typed anything in the chat box. But in the meantime, please um, do this exercise because it's gonna be very crucial for you to, um, you know, for you to write your personal statement. While you're doing this exercise, I wanna mention that um, this is, you know, this session is going to be recorded and the recording is going to be posted on YouTube for about 48 hours. So you, if you cannot finish the webinar today or if you have other commitments during the webinar, you can feel, you know, feel free to leave at any point and then you can come back and watch it within the next, within the next 48 hours. And if, um, and I will send out the slides to the email list so that if, you know, you have, you have the slides as well to, to look at. And because you have joined today at the webinar, um, I have a special offer that I'm going to talk about at the end. All right. So having said that, let's, uh, you know, uh, I hope you have three to four stories down at the moment. And, uh, you know, three to four stories that shows why you want to, you know, how you became interested in dentistry. Now, pick one of those incidents and elaborate that into three to five sentences. It does not have to be as vivid as the examples you have seen before, but I want something like, you know, what was the, what was the, what happened? And then give me like two, three sentences of details of what exactly happened. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be colorful. Just tell me like, tell me as it is in plain, simple English. And then finally talk about what the, what was the result? What was the result of, um, of that incident, maybe that made you become interested in dentistry, or maybe that was, um, you know, a moment you became inspired to become become a dentist. Now, in this in this slide, I have put, you know, I have listed the example you have seen before, and I also kind of broke it down into pieces as to like what uh, what she, you know, she wrote in her introduction, uh, you know, how she wrote it, and and you know how she, how she broke it down into pieces. So what happened? What are, what are the details? What, what was the result that was achieved? 
take about two minutes to to um, to have this ex you know to do this exercise because it's gonna be very important uh, it's gonna be very important that you do this right now otherwise it's gonna be you know it it's gonna be a waste of your time to watch the webinar and not take any action so I highly recommend that you take a piece of paper and write down you know th three to five sentences uh, about the story or incident that made you interested in dentistry maybe you know maybe again it it could be your visit to the orthodontist and how he or she uh you know gave you a beautiful smile and confidence that you didn't have before um maybe it's your grandmother who was a dentist and you have seen her practice dentistry in the philippines or some other country um and you know i'm not making this up this is real real story i've had a students who saw their grandmother practice dentistry in, in the philippines um and also saw their mother and 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 dad be, you know as dentists growing up so a lot of people have different stories so make sure you can talk about, you, you can write your own story and it's it's your story um you have to you know you have to write it as vividly as possible um and the other thing I want to mention right now is that story writing takes a while. Uh, the first time you write it down on a piece of paper, it's not going to be perfect. You have to practice it over and over again to make sure that it's colorful and it's vivid. Um, like the examples you have seen, I know this person has probably written five to six drafts of her personal statement. So while you're doing that, I'm on the I'm on the YouTube channel. I have um, you know, please send me your chat. Sign into Google and send me your chat. Um, and I want to see what uh, you know what questions you have about this exercise. Okay, so that was our genesis. You know the origination story. Make sure you have a hook. Make sure you write a interesting introduction because that's that's going to propel the ad come to read forward the second part of the gpsl framework is the p so the p stands for personality you have to shine your personality into your application and let's take a look at ex an example um this is the example uh, that you have seen you know this is an example of the same person uh, same statement that you have seen before. Um, let's take a look at it for 30 seconds and see what you get out of this uh, paragraph. Okay, so from this example, I feel that, you know, I, I can understand she's extremely determined and she, you know, she does not just say that she's determined, but she also shows example. She, you know, she took all the possible opportunities to practice English. She, she um, you know, she pursued um, and passed all the exams that she had to take for the courses. So she talks about very simple stories and and connects that to show her personality that she is a very determined person. She is going to do anything to overcome any obstacles she faces. Now let's look at another example. In this one, you know, take a look at it for maybe about 25 to 30 seconds and, and um, type it in the chat box, what do you realize about this person's personality? Sorry about that. Um, yeah, please take a look at it and, and let me know in the chat box what you're seeing about, uh, what, what do you think about this person's personality? All right, so if you read very closely, he does not talk a lot about um, his personality, in, but he injects them into the paragraph. It's very subtle. Uh, he talks about his patience, and he also talks about, you know, his his you know his continued to wait. Basically, it's, he's saying that he's persevering. He does not give up. Um, those are two values. Those are two personalities you need to have. You need to have as a dentist. You need to be extremely patient with your patient. Um, you need to be patient. And you need to be perseverant because you have to sometimes do surgery for hours and hours and you have to stand on your feet. Um, and it's not easy. It takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of effort. So you need to inject those personalities into your essay. Now, do you have to do it in your second paragraph right after your introduction? No, you can do it any, any, at any part of the essay. As long as you inject your personality and show who you are as a person, you know, you should be good to go. One of my students talked about how, you know, how she, um, one of my students talked about how she was um, volunteering at, a, at an old home and, 
how she built a rapport with an old lady who had an amnesia, right? And and the person does not remember many things, but she, you know, she built a good relationship with the uh, with that patient. And when she went back there, maybe like one or two years later, they, rem- you know, that lady remembered her because of because of the connection that she created with her. Even though she forgets people or or she forgets things, she remembered her, uh, you know, my student because uh, of the connection. So. She, this this shows that uh, you know this example shows that uh, my student was invested in building relationship with the patient and she's going to be a good dentist because of this kind of connection that she is building with with her patients now if you are um, if you are telling me a story uh, about your personality i want you to not uh, you know make sure uh, make sure you write stories if you are not um, writing stories or if you're not injecting your personalities in the story, um, you're, not, you're, you're not providing a lot of value in the personal statement. Because personal statement has to be personal. It has to tell stories, but meaningful stories that shows who you are as a person. Um, in the example before, we saw that this person was patient and perseverance, you know, perseverant. And the example before that, you know, in the in the first example, you saw that this person was uh, determined and wanna will do anything to succeed. So, what is your strength? What are your uh, you know personality types? So, now we are going to do another exercise where you're going to write down three characteristics or personality traits that you have and that you you think will make you a great dentist. Take thirty seconds to. Jot that down on your on a piece of paper, um, and and write down what uh, you know. What are some of the characteristics that will make you a great dentist? And then I want you to write, you know, find maybe two or three stories to back up these characteristics. So if you are patient, give me, you know, if you think that you're patient, give me an example where you have displayed or demonstrated patience. Or if you are determined to achieve any obstacles in your life, give me an example of when you had to, um, you know, when you challenged yourself to overcome a significant obstacles in life. Take one or two minutes um, to write those, you know, write those characteristics and also the stories to back it up um, on a piece of paper. In the meantime, I'm going to check on YouTube to see if any comment came up. Oh, I'm seeing Roger, St- Roger from Los Angeles. Hi, Roger. If you guys have any question, you know, type it in the chat box. I am going to answer them throughout the presentation. Uh, while you're writing down your characteristics and um, and what will make you a great dentist, I'm gonna take a sip of water because um, I have to keep myself hydrated, right? Guys, this is this is really important for you as much as it's important for me. So you know. Do do write um, do write on the chat uh, live chat because it's gonna help us uh, communicate throughout the session and make us more engaging. Um, you know, make us make us more uh, make this session more fruitful for you. And I mean, you know, I, although I'm available all the time to help you out later down the line, I want you to take the most out of this uh, session. And, and Roger, if you have any question, you know, type it in the chat box. If you missed anything, this is going to be available later, later for 48 hours. So, uh, you know, definitely take, take advantage of that. All right. I hope by this time you have two or three characteristics that you have written down. And maybe you have one or two stories that you want to share. If you have anything to share, do share that on the live chat. Um, I would like to read it out for people. And if you don't want to share it out with with the you know with the YouTube community, I, it's completely fine. Uh, you know you can definitely share that with me later. All right, so we are almost half an hour. Uh, we 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 completed half an hour, and we went over two out of the four elements of the framework. So let's talk about the shadow story, the S of the GPSL framework. 
Guys, I came up with this framework because this is very useful. This, um, if, you, if you do not follow the framework, it's probably a risk that you have to take. Um, but if you follow the framework and you, you want to uh, you know, you write other stories on top of it, it's perfectly fine. Now, let's talk about the shadow story. What should you do in the shadow story? Be vivid. You know, provide a story. Some people just tell, you know, tell the story of like what they have seen in the dental office, what, you know, uh, I've, I've had students talk about, oh, I've seen XYZ instruments and, you know, like I've seen XYZ patients. Those are not useful. Um, but talk about how does your dentist interact with his patients? You know, what, what techniques does he use? Um, does he do anything cool? You know, like, you know, does does he make them laugh or does he tell jokes, right? Something like that. How does he how does he ease the pain of the patient? What does he do? Um, do you recall any cool cases? So, for example, when I was um, when I was shadowing Dr. Pinto at UPenn, um, he was treating people that had HIV/AIDS. So you you would see all kinds of people, uh, you know, coming with different medically compromised cases, and he would be doing treatments for them and it's pretty cool to see because their treatment would be different from uh, a normal you know a normal patient he also he also um, did a lot of systemic treatments so sometimes he would reach out to pain psychologist and uh, reach out to the physician of those patients of the medically compromised patient to create a a holistic um, treatment plan and that was you know that was really cool to see and i talked about that on my on my personal statement then how have you you know how have you applied uh, or how you are going to apply that learning the the learning that you had through your shadowing experience onto one or two of your activities so talk about that as well that's going to that's going to be important um so let's look at a shadow story execution so this is from my personal statement i i talked about um, you know, I talked about how uh, my orthodontist, you know, halved my fee and I, that allowed me to uh, get treatment for my, for my braces. But I also talk about Dr. Pinto, who is, uh, who is an oral surgeon uh, at UPenn now. He is at Case Western. Um, you know, during this interaction, I talked about what I've seen at his, um, at his um, what, sorry, what I've seen at the shadowing um, process. And basically, I just I just wrote it down, you know, in a in a format that was easy to explain. So I saw how dentists not just treat the local symptoms or pains, but also address it in a systemic way. Um, you know, what I as what I said before, that Dr. Pinto uh, looks at the patient not from just one angle, not from the you know mouth or teeth angle, but also look at it from a holistic angle. He he um, reaches out to the pain psychologists, the physicians to create a holistic treatment plan. And that was something I took out from the shadowing trip. Now, if you want to take the shadowing story one level deep, you can do that by explaining how you, you know, explaining what you've learned from the shadowing experience and implementing it into one of your activities. So, so if you take a look at the next, um, next example, I talk about how the interactive process of Dr. Pinto with his patients reminded me of, uh, you know, reminded me of my mentoring program or something that I have done in my uh, in my community service uh, activities or in my extracurricular activities. And you know, take it take maybe thirty seconds to read this or maybe a minute to read this and see what you you know see what you think about uh, the connection that I made between um, learning from Dr. Pinto and uh, connecting it with a refugee named Abdi. All right, so if you took a look at it, you know, this is an advanced tactic. Uh, not many people are going to use it, but a lot of my students use it very successfully. Um, I recommend that you do it as well because in the shadowing process, if you just talk about your shadowing experience, it's not that, you know, it's not that interesting because everyone is going to have the similar shadowing experience. Everyone uh, essentially shadows a general dentist. So you want to be different from them. You want to show that what you've learned, you're 
practicing it right away with the activities that you're doing. And that's very important. Now let's look at another execution of the shadowing story. Um, this is from another student of mine. Um, and she right now goes to Midwestern Illinois. Look at how she talks about her shadowing story and, and see what is the, you know, it's slightly different from, excuse me, slightly different from how I wrote mine, but it's also a great execution of the shadowing story. Take a look at it, you know, take maybe 30 to 45 seconds to read this. What do you think of it? It's, you know, this is, this is an interesting scenario because she was not shadowing someone, but she was a dental assistant. So the story is slightly different, but she talks about the process she, you know, she, the process she participated in and how she helped the patients to feel, uh, you know, feel better or uh, how she made, how she made life of the patient easier. And, and at the end, she ended with how the patient came back and thanked her. This is important because, you know, her experience is different. A lot of the dental, uh, pre-dental students are not going to be dental assistant. Um, you know, that if you're a dental assistant, you probably are a bit older. So, uh, you know, you have a different experience that you're coming in with. And my, this student of mine executes that experience very well. She talks about her process of interacting with the patient and, you know, and, and weaves that with how she's going to become a great dentist because of the way that she's treating the patient right now. Now, patient interaction is going to be, you know, maybe a big, you know, patient interaction is going to be a big chunk of your job when you become a dentist. So make sure that whenever you can talk about that patient interaction, how you would become, you know, how you would uh, treat a patient or what your, what was your experience treating a patient if you, uh, if you are at a shadowing, uh, tr you know, shadowing activity, or if you, if you had interaction with patient, you know, explain that in a, in a beautiful manner, in a colorful manner that Adcom would be able to relate to. Now let's look at a terrible example. This is one of my. Uh, this is also from one of my students who was, uh, you know, came in with with this personal statement to me. Um, look at look at what he you know what he wrote. Basically, you know, he was um, he was talking about um, he was talking about witnessing different relationship in the dent in the dental shadowing, but he doesn't you know he doesn't tell any story. He just mentions what he saw. A lot of my students do that, and that's completely wrong. You do not want to do that. You want to write a story about your shadowing experience, and um, ideally, you want to write about w your particular interaction with the with the patient if you can. If you don't have experiences with patient, um, and you know, a lot of the dental pre dental students don't have experience with patients. They just observe. So talk about what the dentist was doing with the patient, and then you know, connect that with, with connect that learning with. Um, with something that you've done in your in your extracurricular activities or in your in your volunteering activities, this is you know this in this way you are able to connect your shadowing story with your leadership story, which we're going to talk very shortly. Um, so let's you know let's write let's do another exercise. This is going to be very useful for you right now. So this in this exercise you're going to jot down a few things that you learned from your dentist. Um, you know, what was his patient interaction like, or what was her patient interaction like? Um, was there any cool cases that you observed? And then go one, le one layer deep. How did you implement what you learned at your shadowing uh, into your community service activities or, or leadership activities? If you don't have any activities that you can connect with, that's completely fine. This is, a, this is an advanced tactic that a lot of my students use, um, and I also have used it myself. Um, if, you don't, if you cannot use it right now, it's perfectly fine. You know, maybe down the line, if we talk one-on-one um, -on, -one on the phone, you'll be able to better implement that. All righty. <clears throat> now, take maybe one minute to to fill, fill out this activity. This is gonna take, you know, again, take a piece of paper, write down what you have learned from your dentist and how was his or her interaction with the patient. Okay. If you are done with, with this exercise, there is a, um, you know, uh, and if you, want, if, you want to share, if you want to share your experience, do share that on the live chat box, um, you know, being engaged in this um, being engaged in this webinar will help you out in writing the personal statement tremendously. Alrighty.
um, while you are doing that, you know, take, some, take one or two minutes to, to finish that exercise. So once you're done with the exercise, I want you to, you know, I want you to um, reflect on the activities that you have learned from your dentist and, you know, make sure you jot down all the cool cases that you have observed. And in this, um, in this paragraph or in, in the shadowing story paragraph, you're going to talk about uh, the patient interaction and you're also going to talk about um, the cases that you have seen at the, at the dental office. What are some of the don'ts that you have to uh, think about when you're writing a shadowing story? Uh, let me make it full screen because that's useful. Let me take a sip of water. Um, in the shadowing story, you should not talk about the instruments being used uh, because that does not add any value to the personal statement. Do not also, you know, don't about, um, also don't talk about your how great the dentist is because that does not add anything. And instead of focusing on the dentist, talk about what you have learned from him and how you have implemented that learning. Um, that's really important because that the personal statement is not about that dentist. The personal statement is about you and uh, you know you have to show that you're learning something out of that experience that you have had with the with the dentist and um, not you know not how great the dentist is and I kid you not so many times I've seen students talk about how great their dentist is and how great thing you know like the, the way that they do things it's it's okay that you know it's, it's okay to say that but it should not be the primal focus of your shadowing story paragraph. The primal, sh the primal focus should be what you have learned and how you are going to implement it in a, in a, and how you are going to implement it in an activity. All right, and the final part of the GPSL framework is the leadership activity. Now, let's let's look at what are uh, you know what does that mean? What could be experienced with uh, leadership? It could be your volunteering experience, it could be community service exp uh, experience, it could be your, your club or any other extracurricular leadership experiences. You know, it does not have to be a dental related experience, but if it's a dental related experience, it makes it pretty relevant for your case, you know, for your, uh, for your application. Uh, the examples that I'm going to show you are mostly uh, coming from dental related personal statement. Now, when you talk about sh your leadership experiences, when you write stories about your leadership experiences, you have to focus on the impact you're making. A lot of the times, students just talk about what they have done in the in the club or in the volunteering uh, activity. It it's not relevant. The impact that you make is more more rewarding and more relevant towards the essay. Um, one more thing uh, in terms of the leadership experience, this story. Uh, you know, your activity, your leadership activity does not have to be relevant to our dentistry, but the story has to be relevant itself. And I would, I would explain it to you more. It, the basic idea is that the way that your story is progressing right now, you talked about your interest in dentistry, you talked about your um, personality, you talked about your shadowing story. The leadership story has to weave into that framework you know, like, like, you know, very smoothly. It cannot just create a friction with that, you know, with the stories that you're telling. It has to be relevant towards the stories that you're, you, you told thus far. Now, what if I don't have any related, you know, dental related activities? I, as I said, it does not matter. Talk about any other community service or leadership experiences. Um, let's look at an execution of a leadership story. This is, uh, this is quite long, but I want you to take a look at it and read it for maybe 45, to 45 seconds to 60 seconds. And, you know, type, in, type it in the chat box what you have learned about, um, you know, about this specific story. So if you have done reading this, um, what do you get out of this story? I'm basically telling about the fact that I've co-founded a, um, a community service program at my school, um, you know, this is my own. This is from my own personal statement. I uh, co-founded a community service activity in my school and conducted workshop in the lowest, low income district store, uh, low income schools in the city. Um, some, you know, some th more factuals. But then I talk about uh, I talk about Tagita, a first grader. 
um, and that's not her real name, but I, I bring her out because it's one person and I'm making an impact in her life. I'm showing that, you know, uh, like I'm showing uh, just by just by doing these activities in that school, I'm making a change, you know, I'm making an impact in her life. I'm making an impact in other people's life. And that's important when you're talking about your, um, you know, your sh your shadowing ex activities or your leadership activities or extracurricular activities. You have to show impact. Um, impact matters more than just sh showing the facts or telling, ex you know, telling what you have done. Let's look at another example. Um, this is an example from another of my students who is going to Midwestern Illinois. Um, the, you know, take take maybe thirty seconds to take a look at it and. Let me know in the chat box what you think of this story. Alrighty, um, so what do you understand or what do you think of the story? And do you see a common thread bet between the two, two stories that I showed in the example? Basically, she's talking about her her grandfather. Um, basic, you know, her 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 essay was um, her essay centered around her grandfather's um, story. But in this paragraph, she is basically talking about how she made an impact at the free dental clinic that she volunteers at. Now, you may not have a lot of impact right now because you know you are still a pre dental. You are. Uh, not doing a lot of activities, you know, you're not making, uh, you, you're not doing a lot of activities that allow, you know, that enables you to make a huge impact. But if you make a small impact in one person's life, that's important. And you want to make sure that you showcase that um, specific impact in your personal statement. Now, let this is the first, this is the last exercise we're going to be doing. Um, and so write down your, you know, think about your extracurricular activities and jot down two or three incidences during which you displayed leadership. So, you know, think about two or three incidences where you displayed leadership. You don't have to write details, but just, you know, write bullet points as to what, you know, how you have displayed lead, uh, your leadership activities. Right, Roger. Um, I'm just looking at the chat box and it's, it's great. Um, thanks for responding in the chat. Um, yes, the story was about, um, you know, about the grandfather and I'll talk about more in the, in the central theme, um, slides. So if you are, you know, comfortable sharing about your leadership activities and how you displayed leadership, you know, jot down something on the chat box, uh, would love to listen to what you have to say. But if you are not comfortable, we can move on and talk about the GPSL framework and the central thesis. Now we've finished the GPSL framework, the genesis of the of your interest, uh, the shining of personality, uh, sh your shadowing story, and your leadership story. Those are you know those rotates. Excuse me. These four elements are gonna are going to be connected via a single thread or a thesis that has to be uh, on your essay. So, for example, some, you know, one of my students talked about her ailing grandfather who inspired her to pursue dentistry. Another student talked about her passion for combining arts and sciences. She was, you know, she was doing aerial silk activities or maybe she was dancing uh, you know she is a competitive dancer and now she wants to combine her her passion for the arts with the sciences and that's why she want to be a dentist and you know that's how she connected the whole whole essay and f in, in you know you can also talk about your passion for teaching one of my students wanted to teach as a dentist you know once she became a dentist she wanted to teach part time and she talked about that in her essay so you can you can take many different central theme like for my essay you can find that on on um the three sample essays that i've sh shared with you 
in my essay, I talked about my family's struggle, financial struggle, and my family's, you know, uh, my family and my my perseverance uh, throughout the essay. And that you know, that's a central theme for me. So you have to find a central central theme that connects all these four, you know, elements: the introduction, the genesis of your, you know, the genesis of your interest in dentistry, the personality, the shadowing, the leadership. So let's talk about conclusion. When you want to write a good conclusion, you want to connect back to the introduction story. And that's, you know, that's what a good conclusion does. You, you want to circle back to the introduction because that will do a full circle with the theme that you're using. Um, you want to have a compelling end sentence. Essentially, the conclusion has to be remarkable so that they remember who you are based on the conclusion that you write. Um, and let's look at some example. This is this is my conclusion. In this conclusion, uh, what I have done is basically connect and and bring back together what I have talked about in the essay, um, in in three to four sentences. And if you can see, I ended with a kind of a kind of a phrase. You know, I understand that progress will be slow. For now, I vote to stay focused, stay patient. And this is the whole central theme of my essay, you know, to be able to stay focused and, and patient. And you want, you know, in, in, in a good conclusion, in a great conclusion, you want to connect back to the uh, stories that you talked about and you want to, you know, share something that, that leaves an impression on the adcom. You don't want to write something generic or something that other people would write. Um, your your conclusion has to be unique to yourself and your stories. Having said that, let's look at another example. This is from another student, and she does a very good job. She does a very fine job talking about um, becoming the first Uyghur dentist in the U.S. Uyghur is a, um, I think it's one of the um, ethnic group in China, um, and she talks about becoming the first Uyghur dentist in the U.S. And, and that's amazing because, you know, she leaves an impression on you, who she is as a person. And, and she is trying to, be, you know, make her mark. Um, so take maybe like 15, 20 seconds to read this uh, conclusion. This is a great example of a conclusion that I, I really like and admire. Um, some don'ts about conclusion. Don't write something cliche. Uh, don't write something that's going to... Um, you know, get you rejected. Um, don't write. Don't write something that's gonna be generic. So let's look at an example that's pretty bad. By pursuing the the advanced ed degree in Doctor of Dental Medicine, I will have the chance to study about human body. I mean, anyone can say that. Specialize in the dental art of treating oral problems and have access. To, I mean, this. Look at this. This is just boring and absolute garbage because it's just you know just plain just generic. Anyone can write that. It does not connect back to the story that you have been telling in, this, in the personal statement. It does not uh, do justice to the stories that he has been telling in, this, in the personal statement. So, you know, it's, it's a really bad example. So, please don't do that. Now, having said that, do you have any questions? Because after, after this um, segment, we're going to jump into talking about my personal statement uh, services. And, um, you know, if, if you... Um, if you have been benefited by the webinar, you know, feel free to stay. And if you if you don't want to stay, that's fine. I have a specific offer for you guys because you joined the webinar. So I'll share that at the end of the presentation. Um, let me look at the chat. I'm seeing. Um, so if you have any question, that's fine. If you don't have any question, that's uh, uh, you know, feel free to send me an email at dentalschoolcoach at gmail dot com. But if you are interested in the personal statement service that I have to offer, you know, stay tuned. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you out to write a personal statement, basically, that guarantees admission. So if you use my services and don't get accepted, I'll give you give your money back. I have a 97% success rate, and that's, you know, that's there for a reason. Um, so what is specific about my personal ser uh, statement service? Uh, you know, it's it's pretty unique because I provide one-on-one -on -one brain, brainstorming. So if you're struggling with coming up with an idea, um, I got on a Skype call with you and, you know, uh, do do it do one-on-one -on -one brainstorming. And then we I record the session and send it to you on, on private channel on YouTube so you can look at it. 
I also do a lot of structure review, extensive structure, uh, structure review. The reason I do that is because many of the students come to me and tell me that, oh, I just need some polishing on my, on my essay. In effect, they need to have a lot of structure um, editing done. So in that case, you know, I just be, I'm, I'm pretty honest with you. I'll tell you exactly what you need in your essay. And if I, tell, if I feel that there is no need to do a structure review, I'll tell you, you, know, tell you that as well. Um, and again, like any, any personal statement review comes with a good grammar polishing and, and review of the grammar. So I'll, I'll do that as well. But I think the, the most significant piece of my service is the YouTube video teardown. So you've probably seen many, uh, you know, you've probably seen on the YouTube channel of mine, I do video teardowns of personal statement. And for students who, you know, who take my services, I provide, I provide them um, a YouTube video teardown. Basically, I go in depth. Um, in telling them what are some of the things they have to improve in the essay. And you know, the, the reason I do that is because you know, I'm not seeing you face to face. I'm, and I'm pretty remote from you. But by looking at the YouTube video, you can see and feel the way that I'm conducting the, the tear down the video. And you'll feel that I'm sitting right next to you and helping you out. Show the guys the slides so that you can take a look at the slides and, and you know the slides are you know essentially provide the same value and if you do decide to work with me you know I'm gonna make this video available to you as well all right thank you so much and um, you know thank you so much for joining and I look forward to seeing you inside bye